Hello everybody, it's Lost Pilot with another video for MSFS add-ons linker. There was an update yesterday to version 0.4 and I wanted to also cover a couple um, things I didn't cover in prior videos. So this is kind of an update video as well as a deeper dive into some of the UI options you have available to you in this program. Uh, for a overview of the entire program, uh, still check out my last video. That one mostly is still 100% accurate to this version. There are only a couple changes primarily to the options menu that launches the first time you run the program, uh, but once you have that all set up all of the uh, functionality is going to be the same as the last video I posted, so be sure to check that out if you want to see how to use the program in general. Alright, so to go over the changes, first and foremost in the options menu now, we have a change here where you're able to add multiple add-on folders, so you can add as many as you want here, you can move them up and down, or move them, and this is handy if you want to manage your add-on separately uh, as root folders. As you notice on the left here, I have this root folder MSFS add-ons, and that's essentially coming from the uh, title of the folder here, so you can create as many of those folders as you want, add them here, uh, or you can just have one folder and manage everything inside of that folder as well. Other big difference here is you can now choose your FS version from a drop-down menu, which is great. Uh, so you can still set a free path if you want. You could put your path if you know it right there. Or if you're using FS Jump Starter 2020, which I'm not super familiar with, but if you're using that, you can use this option here as well. Or if you're using the Steam version like I am, you have two options, Steam and Steam Fast Launch, which removes some of those startup videos. And same for the Microsoft Store or DVD version, you've got the regular and fast launch versions. So I'm going to select Steam Fast Launch for myself here. Uh, everything else is essentially the same uh, in this uh, options menu now, so I won't go over that. Again, check my prior video if you have any questions. All right, uh, one of the things I wanted to show was some of the um, more in-depth customization you can do to this program, which you might not be aware of and I didn't cover in the prior video. So we did go over a couple of the options that are in the right-click context menu here. But one of the ones we didn't talk about is the quick filters as well as custom filters. Uh, so first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and disable a mod just to kind of show you how this works. Um, and it's yelling at me that the simulator is running because I booted it up using the quick uh, launch feature, which is that play button there, just to make sure that worked. Um, we will just ignore that for now. Uh, so I've disabled the XCUB performance, and I did that so we could show that you can go to quick filters, view only disabled add-ons, which is going to show you uh, whatever add-ons you have dis, uh, disabled. And this is handy if you have a whole lot of add-ons and you uh, don't know where the disabled one is and you see that kind of square in the checkbox so you know that, okay, something's disabled. Where is it? Uh, especially in like a liveries folder, which can get pretty um, large, uh, you can use that to go and find quickly whatever one's not enabled. Or you can also right click and click enable all or disable all add-ons or enable all visible or disable all visible add-ons as well. So we're going to go ahead and actually re-enable that here, and we'll ignore that warning once again. And this can happen occasionally, so this is still showing that, that there's a filter here, right, where we enabled the only one that was not enabled, and now we have nothing here. And I do want to warn that you might encounter an error if you right-click when there is nothing. Uh, not always, but it can happen. If that happens, just click continue and then go and clear your filter and then right click something in this panel and it should be fine. It's only happened to me once, but I wanted to mention it just in case it happens to you. All right, so now that we're back with everything we wanted enabled enabled, I wanna show you how you can customize your filters even further, uh, which is pretty cool. So we'll collapse everything here and we'll just say that we wanted to search for that Xcub mod. One of the things we can do here is right click and click filter editor. And you'll see that there's this editor here that says and, and then this rule description begins with enter a value. So we actually don't want to look in the description, we want to look in the title or the name rather. So let's click this drop down and go to name. And begins with, you can also click this to change. So you could say just contains or begins with. So I'm going to choose contains in this case and I'm going to enter a value and I'm just going to enter x cub and I'm going to click apply. And you'll see a few things have shown up here. So we'll expand this and you'll see all these Xcub uh, liveries have appeared because Xcub is in the name. And furthermore, in utilities, Xcub performance has appeared. So that's a way to essentially create a filter here that you can uh, use to uh, you know, find things by name or any of these other uh, options here. You can click edit filter to modify it. You can 
uncheck it to quickly remove that filter and recheck it to apply it again, or you can click this X here to just get rid of the filter entirely. Um, one of the things I wanted to show as well is that you can customize your uh, toolbar options up here, your columns. So when you right click on either side here, uh, you can click this column chooser, or you can quickly hide a column by clicking, um, I guess you can only do that on this side, you can click hide this column on this side. It doesn't let you do that, but you can still hide columns. So I'm gonna click column chooser, and down here at the bottom right, we've got this customization menu that pull, pulls up. And you'll see that there are three in here right now for me, content type, enabled, and title. These are ones that are not enabled currently. If I wanted to enable one, I can double click it, and then we can see that enabled is now a column available to us here. If I wanted to get rid of this column, I would grab it and I would drag it back into that customization toolbar. Uh, so I'm gonna do the same for a few of these because I added a bunch to test this out earlier and I don't necessarily care too much about most of this stuff. So we'll go ahead and remove all these things that we don't really need and and the creator usually shows up over in the other side. So we'll just clear out all these, make this nice and simple. We'll even get rid of, uh, let's see, we can keep description if we want, but yeah, let's go ahead and actually remove that as well. And it might not, uh, once this is full, it might not be possible to drag other ones into it. We'll close that customization again and try again real quick, but that might be what we're running into here is that there's no blank space in this customization menu. So let's move it, open up some more space and drag. No, nope, not gonna let us. So description, it seems like might be required. Um, or there might be just a minimum number of columns that you have to have or a maximum number of columns you can have in here. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll just assume that's what's going on. Oh, there we go. I was able to get the manifest to go there. So sometimes it's a little finicky. You just have to work with it and figure out how to, how to get it to recognize. Once I kind of moved this around, it seemed pretty happy to let me do that. Okay, so there it is nice and clean with just the things I am interested in here. Uh, so we'll leave that as is. You can of course resize your columns if needed. It might auto size some of them. There's this best fit option as well if you right click. Um, and of course you can click to sort any of these columns as well, which I didn't show previously. So we could sort by whatever we want and then we could of course clear the sorting here if we didn't like the sorting we did and best fit all columns will attempt to get the best fit for all the columns. Now it's not necessarily the best fit for the pane width, it's the best fit for the contents, kind of like Microsoft Excel where it just tries to make sure that you can see everything that's in there. So um, you can go ahead and just resize these as you like. If it's too large or too small, we can just slide these down a little bit just to get it to the screen width we want. And actually, I'll go ahead and hide this folder one as well. I don't really need to know where it is because we've got this handy dandy uh, open option here, which opens you right up to the folder. And of course, you can do that on the other side as well. There are some options. You do have a column chooser. You have your filter editor. Uh, you've got the ability to uh, hide columns uh, right there. You can also group by column, show group by box. So there's a lot of things you can do in this UI. Um, that can make it a bit more powerful if there are certain ways you want to see your add-ons listed. Once again, be sure to check out my last video if you need a tutorial on how to set up your add-ons with this program and how to manage them in the community folder on the right side here. Uh, this video is meant to just go over those updates and a couple of the UI elements that I didn't cover in the prior video. So I'll add a link to the prior video in the description below, which still applies to this version in terms of managing your add-on folders and getting those symbolic links created. Uh, be sure to check out the product page on flightsim.to. I'll add a link to the description as well. Uh, and yeah, keep an eye out for other updates there. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.